We have some big news in the weather world. La Nina is officially dead as of a couple of days ago. What's up, guys? I'm Jonathan, your certified meteorologist. And we are talking about the end of the triple dip La Nina. We've had La Nina in play for the last three years. Now, going forward, the official forecast from NOAA and the Climate Prediction Center is for an El Nino to develop by the peak of hurricane season. We're going to talk about what that means and how likely that is to happen. And then we're going to break down kind of how an El Nino could impact the 2023 hurricane season and how it typically does. Again, every year is different, whether there's a La Nina or El Nino present. But nonetheless, there is that typical outlook there. I want to show you the sea surface temperature anomalies. For those that don't know, we constitute La Nina in part by the either colder than normal or war warmer than normal water temperatures off the equatorial Pacific, of the equatorial Pacific, off the coast of Peru. So you see this area where I have circled. You see that orange popping up. That's indicating we have now slightly warmer than normal temperatures. We've had for the last three years blue in this area, indicating below normal temperatures stating that we have a La Nina in play. We're not quite warm enough yet to be in an El Nino. We're in what we call ENSO neutral. That stands for El Nino Southern Oscillation. It's the parent oscillation. The cool phase is La Nina. The warm phase is El Nino. Anyway, we're not quite there just yet, but the thing of note is that we have orange here representing the official end to La Nina. In terms of hurricane season, as we go forward in this video, I want you to kind of picture these numbers. I want you to remember the numbers I have highlighted in yellow, of course. We got the new average update. They update every 10 years for that 30-year average for storms. So just a few years ago, we got the new one. So a typical hurricane season in the Atlantic Basin. It's 14 named storms. Seven of those become hurricanes with three of those turning into major hurricanes. So when we talk about whether it's above normal or below normal, I want you to remember those numbers, and we can revisit that as we come back into play. Typically for a La Nina hurricane season, and this is what we're just coming out of. This is what we've had for the last three hurricane seasons. Again, we have cooler than normal temperatures off of the equatorial Pacific. That means that we have stronger trade winds. That equates to cooler water temperatures. There's lower moisture in this part of the world. It all impa it impacts, it has long-standing, wide-ranging impacts when there's a La Nina or El Nino in play across the world. So that's why we care in the United States, in the Caribbean, in Mexico, in South America for the difference in temperature here, the temperature anomalies off the coast of Peru. When you're in a La Nina year, typically there is less wind shear in the tropical Atlantic Hurricanes do not like wind shear. As violent as they are, they like the atmosphere around them to be nice and quiet so that the thunderstorms can develop and flourish and intensify and so they can do their thing. When there is wind shear present, it knocks those storms down. It makes things hostile for that storm to develop. That's good news. That's what we like. We don't like the, we we don't like we like when there's wind shear. In La Nina, we typically don't have the wind shear. For the Pacific, the opposite is true, though. There's more wind shear, so we typically have a quieter season. Before we get into the El Nino side of things, I want to show you the official forecast from the Climate Prediction Center. This was issued uh, earlier in March. A lot of arrows here, but the thing, to, a couple things to point out, or a lot of bars here in this bar graph. Where we stand here over the next few months, it is predicted that I mean, with great certainty that we are going to stay in that ENSO neutral, meaning that it's not La Nina, we're not quite into El Nino, kind of no man's land. It's at this time where other features could come in and, and dictate how the atmosphere is going to behave when it's kind of a no man's land. As we move forward through the summer, though, this is June, July, August. That's J J JJA. That's what June, July, August is for. And again, this is characterized in ENSO as a three-month average there three month running temperature so that's why you're seeing three months grouped together so we're going to venture out into the peak of hurricane season august september october and you see this red bar here that indicates el nino and the scientists and meteorologists at the climate prediction center are giving it a 61 percent shot 
for in for straight up El Nino to develop by the peak of hurricane season. So again, that is significant because in terms of hurricane season, we like El Nino because in the tropical Atlantic anyway, there tends to be more wind shear. And when there's more wind shear, as we just talked about, there's less room for these storms to develop and intensify when there is wind shear around. It doesn't always happen like that. Again, this is typical. So again, when you're looking at an El Nino, you're looking at weaker trade, trade winds, which allows all of the warmth that's been kind of built up towards all the warm water that has been built up by Australia, Tahiti, to kind of flow back a little bit towards South America. Again, it's hard to believe when you're looking at it from the grand scheme of things, but that matters for weather in the Atlantic, in the Caribbean, in the United States. There's higher moisture content in that area as well. And again, water temperatures are above normal. Now, for hurricane season in the Pacific, there's less wind shear. We typically have a more active season from Mexico and into the Central Pacific. Again, for the Atlantic side, though, we're talking there's typically more wind shear around, which more often than not anyway, leads to less hurricane activity. I say more often than not because the last time we were in an El Nino year was 2019. Okay, remember what happened in 2019? It was a very, very nasty year. We had names like Dorian just absolutely decimate parts of the Bahamas, specifically Grand Bahama Island, Abacos Island. We also had Category 5 Hurricane Lorenzo, so we produced two Cat 5s that season. We did have an above-average year, even with El Nino present. Now, going back a little bit further, one year further, there was an El Nino present back in 2018 that was just a slightly above-average season, but that also produced Category 5 Hurricane Michael. So the point that I'm trying to make here is, while we will be happier if an El Nino is around for hurricane season versus La Nina, it's not the end-all, be-all into determining if it's going to be a quiet season or a nasty season. Certainly, there can be lulls in the wind shear. There could be... It could find something where there's limited shear, and then it can take advantage of very, very warm water temperatures, which, if you looked at the anomalies in the Atlantic and the Gulf of Mexico right now, they are through the roof. We have 80-degree water temperature already in March in parts of the Gulf of Mexico, which is insane by the way. But the point I'm trying to make is even if we had one storm and that storm hit land, it becomes a bad season for the people that it impacts. So I always say it. We always preach it here. It only takes one. And no matter what the official forecast is, what the outlook is when that is released from the National Hurricane Center and NOAA, a little bit later on, it comes out in late May, just before hurricane season officially starts on June 1st. Just always remember to make sure your kits are ready, make sure you're prepared, and to make sure that you're always paying close attention to the weather when we get into hurricane season specifically. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you do want to take a deeper dive, I have links in the description and the comments that will take you to a deeper story here that kind of shows what we just talked about and how... The state of Enso, El Nino versus La Nina, impacts the Atlantic hurricane season. If you have any comments or questions, post that in the comment section below, and we will catch you next time. Thanks so much for watching.